Good morning, or where we happen to be, whatever time of day. My name is Colin Doyle. I'm a senior assistant engineer at Juniper Networks. And today I'm going to be using the ISSU or in-service software upgrade process to upgrade a dual RE MX240 chassis router. The lab environment that I have here in front of me is in our Sunnyvale lab location. I had uh, some remote hands get this all set up for me. We've got a pair of XCS, well actually it's a single XCF with a couple port groups that are gonna be hanging off a pair of MX80s that are bookending the MX240 in the middle that we'll be upgrading. We'll use the XCF to generate a traffic flow, bidirectional traffic flow across the MX240. And the MX80s are there for protocol, just doing some BGP peering. And uh, I believe I'm running OSDF as well. Let's take a look. So I've got three windows here. We're really only going to be focused on one. The two right windows on the right are for the MX80s. I'm connected to these via a remote serial console server. It's got a pretty short timeout value on it. So if you happen to see me get disconnected, like you can see this connection closed by foreign host over here on the left window. That's just because the console servers kicked me out because I haven't typed anything. It doesn't mean that the routers booted me. So, well, I guess I'm not running OSPF, but I do know that I'm running BGP. And over here, uh, two peers. Oh, <laughs> gotta connect first, of course. Derp. Lovely. So I do have BiDi um, between, bidirectional communication between uh, all hosts right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this big. I can blow it up a bit. If I jump to the screen to the right, you'll see the Ixia server that I'm using. I've got a, like I said, bidirectional flow set up. When I start this flow, it'll reset all these counters here. So you see this minuscule loss percentage here is just from the last test I did. So we'll go ahead and fire that up now. We'll start to see these numbers increment here in a moment. Come on, you. There we go. So that's running. Now, if I were to jump back to one of these, actually, I'm do it from here. And uh, just to kind of show you, uh, this is, in fact, you know, flowing traffic through this. I can do a set interfaces XC-100 disable commit. And we should start to see this loss percentage start to go up just as soon as that commits all the way. There it goes. You kind of see it go through the roof there. Yeah, so there's our verification. You can see that loss percentage start to crank up. So we'll go ahead and just roll that back, get back to normal, commit, and quit. Perfect. We'll go ahead and stop this. All right. So that's the environment. Now we get to the nitty gritty. There's a couple of things you want to do before you run an ISSU. Uh, the number one thing, since ISSU is usually core uh, gear or something important that you don't want going offline during an upgrade, is to open a ticket with TAC. That's what they're there for. Just proactively open a ticket. If this is a mission critical system, schedule somebody to be available, get them on a bridge. Even if they never say a word, trust me, it's worth having them on the line. Uh, what the value of opening case with TAC is that you can explain to them what the hardware and the software is that you're using and you know, what your upgrade process looks like and they can validate that update grade process. They'll do things like check the release notes, which I would encourage you to do as well, but you know, they'll check the release notes, they'll make sure there are any conflicts or special considerations, particularly with the type of hardware that you have in your machine. And I'll get into kind of what that means in a minute here. So just open a ticket, tell them what you're planning on doing, get somebody scheduled to like be on the phone if you feel like you want that. Uh, for that uh, particular deployment. That way you're working with the same people or at least the same specialists. So you don't have an issue when you call in and you get a resource that is maybe better with QFX instead of MX. Um, generally, you're not gonna, that's not gonna happen because they delegate, they distribute these things based on what your hardware is, but still, you know, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, hopefully you never use it, but man, you'll be happy it's there if you have an issue. So where I'm at right now is I'm at the MX240 download page. You can just find any of our downloads. You just go to juniper.net, go to the, find the downloads tab at the top, and search for the platform you have, and it'll take you where you need to be. Uh, today we're going to do kind of a minor upgrade. I'm already in the 18.1 code train. I think uh, it's a R1.9 on these REs. 
Uh, and I'm just going to upgrade to 18.1 R 2.6. That's mostly just so it doesn't take forever and a day. So start by grabbing your software and getting it onto the box. The easiest way to do that is to come to Juniper.net, have a login already. Of course, I have one. Your login will, rep, you know, will reflect the entitlements that you have to software. Uh, if you have any issues with this, just reach out to your SE, and they'll get you squared away. And the absolute easiest way to do this, if you have a device that is connected to the internet, uh, like this lab gear is through its FXP port, uh, is to copy this. And you can actually click here, and it gives you the same instructions. But to copy this uh, URL, and then go onto the box, and you can just type file, copy, and then in parentheses put the name. And at the end, do like slash bar slash EMP. Don't just hit enter here, because what it'll do is it'll give you this entire file name, which you'll have to rename once it's on the box. You really just want it to be this part right here. So what I always do is, at this point, I get the command to that point. I copy just the name of the file. And then I put it in here. And then I hit enter. I'm not going to do that now because I've already done this. It takes about, this image took about nine minutes and I didn't want to have to waste anybody's time going through it here. But that is the easiest way to do it. Once that file has been downloaded and this process completes, you can verify that the file is there by simply going to your shell. This is time consuming, sorry. Uh, do a start shell cd slash bar slash tmp ls. And we'll see that I have that file here already. Second thing you want to do, maybe even the first, I know I should have done it first, is to check the version of software that's running on the device. You want to make sure that your REs are running the same code. I, uh, I did this this morning. I actually started this video earlier, way earlier today. I woke up early to do this. Did a show version. This is a RE, 18.1 R1.9. Perfect. That's what I was expecting. I did a uh, request routing engine login backup. Great, I'm on the other RE. I did a show version, and guess what I saw? I saw this. That's that's not good. No, I already upgraded the uh, secondary RE to make it uh, pull in line with the first, and this just happens with our lab gear sometimes. So at this point, we should see exactly the same version on RE1 as we do on RE0, and we do. So that's one of the main prerequisites. The second thing we want to do here is uh, Go through the documentation. I recommend this. Again, open a ticket with tag, but you should look at it as well. And specifically, in here, in the, uh, you can get to here by the downloads. Uh, if you go to the bottom here, you can the place it says documentation. If you click this link, it will actually open up this, uh, this page. Be sure you select the correct release. It will default to the most current release, even if you've clicked it from a page that was already viewing, like maybe like the 18.1. So in my case, I did 18.1, and I clicked this. And when you do that, it will bring up a PDF. And if I scroll down, those, we have you know, one Junos, right? So there's notes here for if you have an ECX, there's notes if you have EX, QFX. We want to scroll down until we find here where it says the uh, MX routers. And then specifically, we'll go down here to uh, migration, upgrade, downgrade instructions. Now, I'm assuming that you have already talked to the attack or uh, your SE or reviewed yourself. You know, this list of known issues, known behavior, resolved issues. Generally speaking, the only there's two reasons to upgrade software. One is because you have your current software is going into life, or there's a bug, and the other is because you're chasing a feature. So you know, it's if it's not one of those things. Don't go upgrading all willy nilly. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, if you've got code that's stable, stay in the code that's stable unless there is a compelling reason to make a change. In this case, the compelling reason is science. So. Migration upgrade downgrade instructions. Here's where we're looking. You'll want to peruse these, and what you'll find with any of the current versions of software, anything from 17.1 on, is that there will be a decent amount of uh, discussion that is dedicated to what to do when you're upgrading from a older version of Junos that's running our older version of FreeBSD 6.x to a new version, which is 11.x. Uh, I'll get into that in some of these other tabs at the top. But if there are other like install-specific notes. Uh, you want to know what those are before you go through the process uh, for that particular piece of code because you don't want to get halfway through an upgrade and realize that uh, there was a note that told you to you know, put in no validators in a different command. So, I'm actually not do that yet. So, I mentioned that there's a certain version of certain versions will upgrade your FreeBSD. That is not the case with us. Um, 
the version I'm running right now, 18.1R19, uh, already has the new updated kernel. Uh, it, it's important to note that when you do a, you know, an upgraded GNOS, it includes the updated kernel as well. It can take a while because it is the package is large and it has, you know, has to be upgrading the 3BSD image as well. Um, but if you're coming from code that is maybe, say, pre pre 17, that list is actually here. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you read these notes because um, that uh, actually it looks like you know security on the brain here, uh, that upgrade can happen in 15. Um, it doesn't necessarily come in 15, but just read through the notes, because if you're already in 17 train, don't worry about it, but if you're coming from something earlier, and again, call JTAC, uh, there are some considerations when you do the upgrade to BSD in terms of retaining anything in your file system you want to keep, not necessarily configs, but any like, scripts or files that you might actually have on the operating, you know, on the uh, on BSD itself. Um, you know, there's some validation commands, it's just, it's a different beast. Not doing that today, but worth highlighting. Uh, there's also requirements when you're going to run an ISSU upgrade. Um, this is mostly just to make sure that um, the REs, the continuity between the upgrade and REs doing their failovers works, but there's also considerations in terms of certain protocols and support for ISSU. Not every protocol supported ISSU at the beginning uh, when ISSU started support, which is like back in code 9 dot something. Um, new protocols might, you know, in an older version of GNOS, not support ISSU, but in a newer, they do. It's another reason why checking with your, you know, according with your SD, according with TAC is a good idea. So this is this is a page I found just by Googling Junos ISSU requirements. And this list here is the things that you need to consider. There's a list of line cards that uh, will need to be manually restarted after the process. None of the line cards we're using right now are part of this. So. Considerations, definitely. And then there's instructions for how to do it. So before you begin, well, you gotta make sure it's supported. You know, I'm not gonna spend any time on this. You'll read this, it works, let's get to it. Uh, the first thing you wanna do if you are gonna run ISSU, you have the image already on your machine, is validate that your machine is ready for an ISSU. So in order to do that, you do a request system software, ISS in service upgrade, validate, Validate. Uh, doing this wrong. System software. Validate and service. There it is. Got it backwards there. Um, and now I can point it to uh, bar tmp slash j install. What this will do is it will actually check. And you can see here that it says I don't have enough space. So I need at least blah 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 worth of space. No problem. Uh, so I have an re1, so we'll do request. Look, you get real world stuff here. Routing engine, probably just cruft on the other RE. Routing engine, login, backup, start, shell. I'd be willing to bet that there's a bunch of images that are in bar slash TMP because this is lab gear. Let's find out. Hey, look at that. So there's there's like two other images on this. Uh, uh, three, pardon me, look at that the dev build and then two other images. These are probably taking up a ton of space. So let's just get rid of those. RM, Junos install, MX, blah, 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 seven, two, uh, yes. Operation not permitted. Well, that's no fun. Do, well, you know what? There's another way to do this too. Um, exit, request, system, storage, cleanup. That'll take care of it as well. And what we'll do is we'll get an actual list of uh, files that are going to be removed prior to actually running the cleanup. One of the problems with that is that it's probably going to clean, I'm doing air quotes here, in the Juniper install that I already loaded on this, but I don't worry about that because I have the image that I'm going to be installing off of already on RE2. So this image here is the old one. So they can all go away. Yes, please. a few times. And we wait. And this is taking longer than before, which is a good sign. So while it's checking, let's go through the other things we want to make sure that we have turned on. Most importantly, there's a couple protocols that you want to have turned on, namely uh, graceful routing engine uh, switchover, GRESS, and nonstop routing. 
these two protocols will ensure that during the switchover process, because what will essentially happen is the master routing engine will upgrade the backup routing engine. And then when the backup routing engine has booted after post upgrade and a couple checks have been run, it'll switch over to it. And then the you know previously master will be upgraded. Uh, GRESS and NSR ensure that during that switchover, the protocol information, other you know things that you don't want to be setting on the control plane remain up, and nonstop routing will ensure that the forwarding plane will not hiccup either during that switchover. Verified. That's looking good. So, all right. Oh, it's part fouring, so I might actually hit the fast forward button here while I go back and I do my editing. Okay, so validation succeeded. That means we are ready to move forward. So let's go ahead and kick our traffic generator on. It'll reset all these statistics. We'll wait till it starts running and we see traffic flowing, and then we'll start the process. Away we go. So request system software add. Oh, it does care. We're actually tell it exactly where the file is. <laughs> the word is an add. Add is actually just uh, for that specific routing engine. We gotta do in service upgrade. Package name var slash temp slash j install. There we go. And we're gonna tell it to reboot so that it doesn't just sit. Let me double check that for a while since I run this. Set system commit synchronize. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, probably should make sure that NSR and Gress are on. I've already done that earlier, but it's always worth checking a second time, right? So where those commands are, we check under a set, show chassis redundancy. Oh, and what we want to do is actually do a display inheritance. So I'm applying a lot of this from group. No, it is not. Look at that. So set chassis. C graceful switchover. There's grass right there. Turn that on for sure. And then show routing options. Display inheritance. 
with that. Don't see NSR there either. Always check. The options. There it is. Non-stop routing. Enter. Admit. That's in synchronize, right? Yes, set system commit synchronize. Set system commit synchronize. Commit. Because I think that was just a normal commit. Oh. that were replicated, show task, replication, BGP's in process, we don't want to wait till that's done. This is also a really good indication that uh, your protocols are going to stay online because it actually is aware that you're running the protocols as a function of the replication that it's doing as a part of GRASS, which is very good. So let's uh, verify that switchover is ready. That by doing request routing engine login backup show switch over yeah, system switch over ready 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 great I think that'll do it yeah so we've already checked uh, the versions on both sides. We're not going to bother with a snapshot because this is just lab gear, but definitely do that if you are doing this on your own machine in sort of production environment, not in a lab. My directional forwarding doesn't simply increase the detection, so we're not running BFD, so we don't have to worry about that. Don't need to worry about black P or any of the other stuff. Okay, I'm upgrading automatically. So you'll see kind of the command that we had done earlier. Oh, that's to get the thing onto the actual box. This is what we almost ran before we went and we double checked that our uh, configuration was where it needed to be. So let's go ahead and do that again. We do a request, system, software. If you were to do the word add, like with most hardware, that would just do the single RE. So we're going to actually do in service, tell it where the file is, temp, and then get the name of the file, and we're going to say reboot. And that's going to actually automate the reboot process after the upgrade. So we'll make sure that our traffic's still running. Sure is. Love it. Off we go. So one thing you're going to see here in just a moment is a spike in the frame delta between my transmit and receive packets. I wanted to slow down the video here just to highlight this because this is actually when one of the uh, minecart um, upgrades is completing, the one that actually we're plugged into. Oh, there it is. So it looks kind of epic, but you'll see at the end of this that it's, it's trivial. Um, the protocols don't drop. The packet flows don't stop. It, it is, uh, I'm flooding these links right now, so you know, that, this can't seem like a big number, but at the end of the day, you're not even going to feel it. All right, <clears throat> now we're back. I just ignore that. And, we are... and hey, look at that. We're on the girl. So, show version in Ocon. All routing engines. We got version 18.1 R26 there. We got, come on, there's a lot to scroll through here. 18.1 R2.6 here as well. You can see from our test that uh, we had a spike in frames when the switchover happened, but it looks, this delta number looks big. I'm flooding the, the, the link with bidirectional traffic. 
So the overall loss number actually never even got higher than I, th I don't think it ever reached even 0.2%. So, you know, network impact would be pretty minimal. Go ahead and stop this. We can also see that the, from the BGP summary here, that the protocol never flapped. Uh, this one says a day and 22 hours that it's been up. This one says 40 minutes, and that's just because this is the length that I shut down prior to the uh, start of the test to validate that the it had an impact, a measurable impact of flow here. That's it. The upgrade process is complete. We're going to do a few post checks here. We can do a show uh, chassis hardware. Uh, oh, I think because I'm on the backup, of course. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, let's just log into the backup. It's now the master. Um, <clears throat> and I could fail this over again if I, I cared to. Uh, I'm not going to, but I could. PR. Let's get this up here. Big. Uh, there we go. So I'll show chassis hardware. Checking to make sure that our FPCs are online and that our picks are online. They are. Chassis uh, pick status, right? Let's do. Uh, where's that? Where's my status? Pick. I guess we do that. Uh, pick slot. PC slot zero. Pick slot zero. Is that right? Is that FPC one? Oh, it is. Oops. Chassis pick. PC slot one. Pick slot zero. Yeah. It's online, see all the interfaces, so that's it. I mean, that's that's the process. Uh, I'll summarize the uh, process in the, uh, the notes here underneath the video. Um, I think the upgrade from start to finish probably only took about 20 minutes, even though this video is a bit longer than that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And uh, if you have anything else you want to see, uh, just uh, leave it in the comments. and. Uh, I can. I'll record a video doing it. Take care. Thanks for the time today. Bye-bye.